beautiful, beautiful people. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode 22 Two of Sit Tight Podcast. Podcast. Woo! And before we forget to tell you guys, like we did last time, this is the season fin- finale. Is it season? Season finale. So after this um, episode, we're going to have a little bit of a break like we did with season one. So this is the last episode of season two. Um, and then we're going to be back again okay. sometime in October November? October November around that time yeah but we'll keep you you guys updated as we always do as we always do but what we wanted to bring today was that stupid 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 woman that everybody has heard she has hmm. given us a nice and it's been a bit of time obviously since everything happened but it's still a little bit fresh still ish yeah. and um, that is the nurse who killed seven babies and nearly killed seven more right yeah was it yeah nearly killed trigger seven warning, or six by more. the way trigger, trigger yeah warning. massive trigger warning um lucy let me yeah how did you feel when you've heard that news um as nurses okay talking from a nursing background i cannot believe that she got away with it for so long mm-hmm. um i don't know i don't know how, i don't even know where to start i just heard about it and i was like really like how can like the thing is, multiple times the issue was escalated multiple times, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. multiple times, and ugh, guys, I can't lie, and nothing was done. Nothing was done. A specific there was a specific doctor who actually Dr. flagged Ravi, up. Ravi, I think. Yeah, his Dr. Ravi. Ravi, I think his name is. Yeah. He escalated concerns to the head of nursing or director of nursing. Mm-hmm. Did nothing, and essentially he was made to apologize to the nurse. So, for those that don't know the story, mm-hmm. do you want to recap? So, I mean, I already mm-hmm. said she killed but how did she kill like yeah. so essentially the story is essentially she was working with neonates um young children and essentially the way that she unalived children essentially was where if they were being given f- fluids or some sometimes they'll give the wrong medication or inject let's say insulin for example into fluids or she would um overdose young little kids um or she push air through or, the IV. Or essentially put in air through an IV line, which can it's be, that's essentially can be very fatal at, yeah. at times. So she did a myriad of things to children and essentially, I don't know how to say. I just know that essentially there was one point where she was very close to some parents talking, laughing with them and essentially was trying, and essentially she knew in her head, I'm trying to unalive your child. Well, yeah, it's not going to yeah. be all, hi, how are you? Very friendly, whatever. But essentially, um, look word at, of the days, essentially. You yeah. said essentially like a hundred times. I know. <laughs> I'll try not to say, say it. But basically, <laughs> basically, she was saying that the rationale behind her decision was that she wants to get attention. Yeah, from a particular person. From one a, person. Like, was it a doctor or something? Yeah, so um, she did all of this world. to get one so person. So you attention. took seven of people's babies out of this world because you wanted to get attention. And it's from a man. Are Are you you? from a man? A common, common man. Man, men that are trash. Men that, that, uh, you, oh Jesus. And then, not just that. And then other, other, um, the other six or seven other ones that didn't pass away, fortunately, but they nearly did. They was like, they were collapsing and, you know, being brought, being brought back to life and stuff like that. So you put the parents through that. And do you know what's even um, more scary? It's after the, the children, the child has passed away. She'll go on the social media of the parents, find the parents. Yeah, did you not hear this? Oh. She will find the parents and write them a card or like a message. I'm so sorry for your loss. I wish I could come to the um, to the funeral. Da, 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 da. That's a psychopath. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. <sighs> And, like, imagine it, it, it makes it even worse because now it's like the rest of the nurses left in whatever field are going to, um, the parents are going to be extra, extra vigilant. And that's going to put more pressure on us mm-hmm. that are innocent, mm-hmm. that are not, you know, thinking of harming anybody that actually chose the career to actually help people. We're going to get, like, now the back the backlash and stuff like that yeah because because essentially 
when you're looking after people, people put their trust in you, yeah. and essentially their lives are in your hands. No especially matter, especially babies. Yeah, especially babies. Oh, they're precious. And they're in intensive care. It's not even like that. There's an intensive care ward, like. You need to have specialist skills to even work yeah, on those sort yeah, of wards. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. just go and be like, oh, I'm a nurse, I'm going to work. No, no, absolutely not. You need to have not. specialized skills. And the fact is that literally you are, you are essentially they were playing God with, she was playing God yeah. with her Yeah, oh, and, absolutely. And then she chose God. to take them. And then th- I heard apparently that she was angry that she didn't actually honor life the other, one, the other children. So apparently when they were in trial, the parents that she went to go see or had very happy relations with, um, they were like, this lady was trying to unalive our child. And apparently she was angry that she didn't manage to unalive the child. What in the hell? She's not okay. And she was taking, like, handover sheets. They found loads at her house of the kids who have also passed away. And when that, when those doctors raised the concerns, um, apparently they had a meeting and then she was crying and all of that. And then her dad came to tell them that they need to apologize to her and they made the doctors that raised the concerns apologize to her so on that aspect i am so sorry i this is going to sound so controversial Girl, and I, I know what you're going to say and we need to t- <clears throat> we need to speak on it because that's exactly what it is it i is. know that if lucy ah. was not a caucasian, caucasian lady <laughs> I had to say she it. wouldn't have got away with it for as long i know absolutely not because essentially the, the person who literally whistleblowed that when you whistleblow, you're not supposed to be identified, but mm-hmm. like, they, they identified a doctor who is a person of color. Mm-hmm. They made him apologize. Yeah. He flagged up genuine concerns. Mm-hmm. They made him apologize. But apparently it got to a point where the, some of the doctors were also white, raising concerns. Apparently he got suspended. And then, do you know what's annoying? Because then I'm seeing like on social media and stuff, right? Other people saying, oh, this isn't about race. It, it is. bloody is. How can it not be about race? No, but the reason why I'm saying it is because when you think about this is, sorry, I'm moving off the topic, but you understand the context. There was um, a police officer, a black lady, mm. who someone accidentally sent um, inappropriate pictures of children to. They sent it to her. She never opened it. When they found out about that, they sacked her straight away. They didn't even give her a time to explain mm-hmm. or anything. They didn't even, like, they investigated. She didn't do. She actually didn't open a message, and they suspended her. They got her sacked straight away. She didn't even have a chance to breathe or anything. It's only recently she got reinstated into the police force. This That's lady, crazy. who's done this 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 crime, which I'm surprised isn't. Anyway, the whole death penalty thing, that's a whole other discussion for another this time. But essentially, why was she not allowed to attend the trial and face the people's children this is that what she This is what I'm saying. Because why does she have a choice? Why does she, especially because of what, like the extent of her crime, why the hell does she have a choice to not go and face those parents and also face the judge to even say her sentence to her? And then now that she's, because of her case, now they're making it compulsory for everyone. Why does it have to come after her? Yeah, why don't you start Why does that her? law have to come after her? It should have started with her. She should have faced it. And have you seen the prison that she's going to? Oh, it looks fancy. Yeah. It's lovely. Oh. She's going to have a well of a time there. That's how they treat. It has a boutique and everything. And she's there for life. And she's there for life. Congratulations, government. You're doing well. It looks much better than some people's homes but and was, rooms. But if it was one of our people. If it was one of our people. They would have tried to. If it was one of our people. They probably would have tried to support us all, we know. Listen, and like you said, it wouldn't have gotten as far as it. Seven. Seven. And I think th- these concerns were escalated to like your heads, your directors of nursing. And they did nothing. They did an internal investigation, but they didn't find anything. How did that investigation even go? Exactly. That's, that's, that's like, how did they do it? Like, because that's the I thing. don't understand. And wait, and it took for. So her father had to come in yeah. to ask. Who the, the heck is he? What? I'm so. Is that his hospital? Because unless that's, that's his that's hospital is and his hospital? trust. Is he like a chief nurse? Is I he don't, like a director if of nursing? That is his, but the thing is, he's nobody. So why, I don't say, why would it take for her father, who's a nobody in the healthcare profession, no offence, have so much power to make a doctor who whistleblowed and have his identity shown mm-hmm. to apologise for something that he raised a genuine concern about? Yeah. And, and because nobody listened, now there are seven, there are seven, par- well, seven families out there without their child. The worst thing is, you know the person who the doctor escalated the concerns to? She still has a job! Apparently they got suspended. Only now. Only now. And it's a suspension. Why is it not a fire? Yeah, why is it, why it, why it not, not fired? Why is it suspension? Why is it, not, why is it suspension? Because then they can come back anytime. 
you know why? They can be like, oh, we're going to do our own now internal investigation as to why they didn't take it so seriously. They're just going to do tick box, tick box, and then they'll be back the next day. Sounds about white to me. Mm-hmm. I just feel mm-hmm. like, and I know loads of people are not saying, no, race does take a big part in this. I'm so sorry. It does. And it's not like we we, we don't like always it being race race um driven. Do you people think we like speaking about race all the time? Do you people think we like um, having the thought that this only happened because that person is a, um, uh, what's it called? Is, is, is a white person or that because that person is a black person. And so, we don't like that because we don't want to experience that. Mm. But it's, let's call this spade a spade. It had something, race had something to do with it. Absolutely. Because if it was a white doctor that raised it initially, I'm sure the identity would have been concealed mm-hmm. as it should be by policy with the whistleblowing. Mm-hmm. And this woman would have been fired. If this woman was black, that firing would have been on the spot. Yeah, they would have fired her straight away. Straight away. They would have no compassion straight whatsoever. Away. And also, when they were doing the investigation, she was still working there, no? No, that's, that's the thing. If you're being investigated for... That, that person should have been suspended. Yeah. And then the investigation they should have happened. They should have reported them to NMC, but there was nothing. I don't understand how NMC didn't get involved. Because if someone is suspended, you have to get NMC involved. If you're, if you're worried NMC about... NMC is um, the Nursing, nursing Midwifery Council. Council. So they're essentially the governing body for all the nurses and midwives yeah. in the country. And essentially every nurse and midwife have a pin. Yeah, and we're all registered. Yes, we all registered. And <laughs> the main thing is that what people don't know is that you can actually search up people's name on the register and, yeah. find, and find out how long they've been working yeah. and what nursing or midwifery subsection that they work mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. and also you are actually as a as a member of public you are able to actually c- directly contact the nmc and escalate concerns mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i am shocked that no one because the thing is i've not heard anything about the nmc in this whole thing no i haven't no one said anything so I they're haven't. telling me that this this woman was unaliving people and nobody no bothered to flag it, it to, to the NMC. NMC. Because the thing is, leaving it to a, hos- a hospital to investigate, they're going to do what's best for their image. Yep. And they're going to try and do damage control as much yep. as possible. Whereas the NMC, they are cut They work for the patients, mate. They don't care about they you as a, care. as a nurse. You they, could be crying. It's the safety of that patient. That you, like, literally, that's why every time, you know, as a nurse, if you're registered with NMC, you can't do wayward things. I would like to do wayward things, like punch some people in the face, but I can't do it. Nope. Because I'll be stricken off. Literally. I will literally be stricken off. I won't be able to work as a nurse ever again. However, somehow, these le- these top people, when this concern was brought to them, didn't think to escalate it to NMC. Because it's like, the fi- essentially what it is, it's like, in the hospital, they'll be like, oh, it's fine, they do damage control. When it goes to NMC... You could you could be crying and they'll just look at you in the eye. They don't. Essentially, give it's between it's it's basically about how you care for people. Yeah. If they deem it as inappropriate, they'll strike you off with yeah, no qualms. Yeah, 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 yeah. They literally don't care. But I didn't hear anything about the UM, the NMC. I didn't hear about RCN getting involved. So I'm no, thinking, oh yeah, none of these governing bodies no. got involved. No, because they kept a shum. They literally kept it in, like literally internal. They didn't go outside because they because again. It's called a spade of space. They didn't want to fire her. Yeah, essentially. It's, and it's, they, didn't they, believe, didn't they didn't believe the doctors. Because apparently they said, and I quote, she doesn't look like the sort of person <gasps> that would do... What do you mean she doesn't look like? What is that sort of person what is that supposed, supposed to look to, at? Yeah, what are they supposed to look like? Tell me. Oh, she doesn't, look like, she doesn't look like the sort of person that would do that. So based on that assumption that you have, essentially she got away with pretty much being a serial killer. Serial killer. And also um, the pictures that they were using for her... Pictures yeah. of her smiling, looking like an like, angel. You, you don't, you da, da, don't da, da, do da, da, that. Da, da. If it was a black person, it would be the mugshot mm. or probably a picture of them, I don't know, not don't, looking their best. Yeah, essentially. Really. But this one, and then another picture of her holding a baby. Are you okay? So based on the stuff that she, I just felt like that was so inappropriate. Oh, because she didn't look, and that, that was the argument that they gave as well. She didn't look like she'd be that sort of person to do that. So what do you have to, so we, we all know what they think that sort of person should yeah, look like. Yeah, we all know we what all they know. think. Let's, let's be honest. Like, I'm so, like, this case made me so angry. Like, not just because obviously, um, part of the race part, but just being a nurse myself as well. Like, it's just like, you're supposed to be caring for these kids. Mm. And 
the reason you did it is because of i mean there's no there's no any good reason to be fair to do such thing but for the attention of somebody as common as a man that just walks across the road a man you want to be doing that nonsense oh my god you did that nonsense like it how would i say this Essentially, it's just painted a lot of nurses in such a bad light. Yeah, yeah, so essentially, yeah, yeah. we have a code of conduct. We have, we have a du- we have a duty of care, mm-hmm. and our duty of care is to always to make sure that our patients are being looked after to the best quality, high quality care yep. all around. And essentially, treat people how you want to be treated. If someone's in your care, you treat them as if they're your family member. You'll ensure that they get the best care possible. Mm-hmm. However, for you to uh, intentionally cause harm to people. And have no remorse about it. And not what? turn up. You should, you, like... At least let the let the parents get that of seeing your face. Yes. And you seeing their face and how heartbroken they are. But you also took that away from them and the... You took away their closure. That's it. Essentially, what she did, she did her thing. She unlived children. She got away with it. And essentially, she got the option to not face the music. So, essentially... You took those those children away from those parents yeah. and you didn't have to deal with the consequences. So what? You're you're locked away, whatever. You're probably a psychopath. That's what you need anyway. She is a but psychopath. essentially you t- you like you making that decision, those parents, they're not getting the closure that they need. No. And you know what? I really, I really, really like as this was going on, I was like, God, if these people turn around and say they are blaming it on mental health and sending her to an asylum, I would have lost it. Yep. I would have lost it. I'm so glad there was no mention of mental health in this because I'm sorry, there shouldn't be. No, Some I cases, that. maybe yes. This, no. I don't care if you are a schizophrenic and no, no, because that's what they use sometimes as an excuse. That's true. To like not send them to jail and they'll be like, oh, it's mental health, mental health. And then they end up doing like what, maybe like five years in the mental and health then, and then um, thing out. and then yeah. they're out. No, listen, this woman knew what she did. She had the capacity. You can have the capacity to make an unwise decision, essentially. Mm. So she knew what she was doing. It was premeditated. She did that. Oh, absolutely premeditated. And then, premeditated. essentially, for <laughs> attention of what? You just kept saying so, so you did all of this for attention for a man. A man. A man that will leave you in the desert without water. water. Honestly. Oh, my God. And then you didn't even have the, the guts to actually face the parents. Apparently she got attacked in the prison. If I talk. Do you know the amount of parents that were attacked? That, 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 that. Yeah. Even me, if I was, if I was a, uh, what's it called? If I was in prison and I was a prisoner and someone came and this was their crime. Boy. She's, they must put, put her in that. You know in those prisons where you have that secure bit? The, where no, yeah, the, iso- like yeah, the isolation bit. The isolation or whatever. I, I feel like that's the only way she's going to be safe. Yeah, because why are you giving her... And also, why does the bedroom look like a child's... Why is it all colourful? No, the jail room. I have no idea. Only they know. I feel like even though she did one of the... Essentially, apparently, she's only the sixth woman, the sixth woman to have a sentence where she will not be entitled to, to, to parole, parole or whatever. I'm so sorry. Bring back capital punishment. Thank you, yes. I was saying this. Bring in, back. in some parts of America, there is. Yeah, there's yeah, still there capital is. punishment. I was, I was saying this. Because if anybody deserves that, it's her. Because essentially, you're telling me, it's her. Oh, you're gonna just lock lock her lock her away for her whole life. That might be she's what she wants. Gonna have some kind of life. Yeah, right? she's gonna have a in life in prison. prison. Yeah, she's still having life for those seven children that she has on alive. She, okay, yeah. So I just feel like the justice system is just. Messed up. It's messed up in itself. It's the whole host- and the thing is, based on this, do you know how many people will not trust hospitals anymore because they covered up such a big thing like that? Mm. Oh my god! And do you know what? Oh, who was it? Who was it? I was having this conversation with someone at work, and do you know what they said? They were like, "But how is this different from people aborting children?" Come on! And oh. I said, "This is not the fucking same." That is not the same. And she was saying that apparently it is. She thinks it's the same. Are they okay? Aborting children because you're killing, you're also killing a child. Excuse me, whoever you are, that is not the same. That is not the Th- same. The thing is, that is your own. This is other people's. But then she said, doesn't that make it worse? I said that exactly what you said. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make it worse. 
No. And also, why would I want to bring a child in the world that I know I'm not going to be able to take care of, that's not going to receive the love that they deserve? Mm. Why would I bring that child in the world when I can have the option of not having the child at all? It's a choice thing. What she it did, is. she removed... Essentially, what she did, she played God and she removed the choice, like... The choice was, from the parents. Yeah, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Because... For all we, because the thing is, we don't know the contents of how ill these children were. They could be very, very real. They were literally on the corner, mm-hmm. or they could have been very, very healthy. Essentially, she destroyed. destroyed. She destroyed those parents' lives because they they're never gonna see their kids again. No. Essentially, she destroyed the reputations of nurses mm-hmm. around the country because people be thinking mm-hmm. and people be asking. Oh, since that case, and like, how did not- her colleagues not clock her other nurses? I wonder how I, they. Feel. I personally feel like they knew. Do you? I think so. I think they knew. I'm so sorry. You're telling me every time this woman comes hands to shift, over and also finish her shifts and hands and over. then someone becomes unalive. Do you? Would you not think that would there's something going on? Because I've heard nothing about her colleagues, like her actual colleagues, not obviously not the doctors that raised yeah. the concerns. I've not heard anything about them. So like I'm, the, the thing is, I'm trying to deep it. So this girl gives you handover, and all of a sudden someone's unalive. Or, and then every time she's on shift and she has there's, there's always a medical always emergency. Some, uh, exactly. And then she's just standing. And the thing is as well, this, is, um, this woman's a psychopath. There's a medical emergency, yeah? Mm. And she's just standing there. I heard yeah. she was just standing yeah, there and watching. There watching. What, sort of, what sort of professional does that? You have yes. a duty of care. Yeah. When you're in a medical emergency, you've got to get all hands on, do your thing. Mm-hmm. Or if you get instructions you've from the You've got to lead. run like for that crash car. Like you've you never have to run, run before. You'll see me run like you saying, but whenever I hear Listen, that buzzer, that I'm buzzer, running. That or buzzer. I am pushing that resource trolley. That buzzer. So she's, so she's just standing there watching. Watching, watching, and watching. And nobody thought that was odd. And no, yeah, no one thought that was odd. People were unalive and on her shift. No one thought that was odd. Mm-hmm. Her hand over, no one thought it was odd. No, like, and the thing is, I'm thinking, some of the medications, you'd have to cross-check them with someone. Mm. The thing is, after, let's say, one or two things happen, would no one think to themselves, things are happening on this shift. On I need to shift. follow her when she administers right. this medication. No one thought about that. Actually, I've got a, I've got a point. Those nurses that are with her, why why are they anonymous? Why does no one know their identity? Yeah. Why does no one know? But people know the identity of who? Of the lady. But why don't they know the identity of these nurses? Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Like, why, like seriously, why does no one know? But then it's like it's like a twofold thing. How did you not clock? But then plain devil's advocate is always is also like this is how busy the nhs is that you know sometimes you're on shift no one else is what's it called it's um on your mind apart from your patient because you're mm. so busy mm. with your patients that sometimes you don't even have the time to go and help others you don't True. even have the time to clock things because you're like you're literally ev- up down everywhere mm. like trying to like care for your patients because you're so busy you're short staff so you have maybe more patients and things like that so sometimes so then it it, it it can be two sides you know it can be like how but then other times it can also be like well if we look into it the business as well she obviously took advantage of that mm. and and did it because all the other nurses are probably and it was always about night shifts wasn't it was it always night shifts? Apparently it was nights. But that's, that's nice. even worse. That because there's less worse. people around to help. That, that, that's why she probably chose nights. Because when, she knows. But then the thing I don't get yet is obviously all of these things happen on su- like all of a sudden. Mm. Did anyone complain to pals? Did anyone complain to hospital? And also, did no one pick up on the fact that, like you said, she was personally going to find those families on Facebook to write them a card? Did no one think that was creepy? They didn't think it was creepy. No, because you said that she was like, um, what's it called? Friendly with some of the pa- uh, the patients, so the parents probably thought, "Oh, you know, she's been nice. Oh, that's that nice nurse that took after, that looked after our, our child." Da, 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 da. So they probably didn't think anything of it in terms of, "Oh, this looks odd. Why is this nurse, you know, um, writing to me or you know, giving me her condolences?" No, but, it, but even so, like whenever you start, obviously when you're working working in the NHS, they always say limit that contact. If that person is your patient, you don't like. Things like adding them on social media mm. or talking to them privately, you don't mm. do that. That's no. that's oh, just, yeah, you can't that's just that. a big no no. So that's why I'm shocked. Like, did that not raise a flag? Like, yeah, you're not allowed. even if like I've known so many people whose relatives have passed away, I would I wouldn't just reach out to them as much as I'd want to. Yeah, it's just that like, having that professional boundary. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm like that was crossed that. as well. So why did no one clock this? Exactly. Ah, uh-uh. 
sit over at NHS, I'm tired. Just it's that, crazy. That, the direct, and the thing is, this this case has been going on for so many years. Yeah, yeah. That, that, Wasn't but, it, was it 2018? Yeah, so it's been like, what, five years? Oh my God, when we were in uni. In, yeah. Doing our training. Yeah, we're Oh, no, no, we just finished. We just finished We had just finished in 2018. And then it's like, the person who's, who the concerns were escalated to, she's still in the job. And do you know what? Her friends are saying they don't believe it until they hear it from her that she's done it. It's because, and if I talk anyway, that's what her friends are saying. But why is she going to admit to something like that? Yeah, exactly, because I'm stupid. I'm going to come and say, yeah, I did. I, so, yeah, oh, she doesn't, I like, did. she doesn't look like she doesn't look like the sort that. of person that will do this. Oh, until she admits to me, I'm not going to believe she did that. Yeah, yeah, literally, that's what they said. They're they all a bunch of psychopaths. I don't understand. It's because it happens to their own children and their own flesh and blood. Because if it was yeah. them, they'll be acting a different way. Exactly, and I think she has a boyfriend as well. That man, you are that man. I think she has a boyfriend. Hey. If I was that man, I'll be so hey. pissed. So you had a boyfriend, and then you were at the same time in a hospital, unliving people's kids for another man's attention. I don't understand. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. How? <sighs> like my head is literally just like punching itself because I'm just thinking like that doesn't even make sense. So you want to get attention of somebody, but what? what e- and the way you get attention is that. Do you not have a man at home to get attention from? Well, clearly not. Clearly not. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know, man. That whole case, it just made my head spin because it's like, yeah, it, she got yeah. away with so many things. Yeah, yeah. It could have been stopped. It, it, it didn't, it, need, it to, could it have didn't been need to reach seven. It really didn't. Even one. It just. Because you know what? There's, there's cases where I've heard, okay, nurses give, have given the wrong blood, they got jailed for manslaughter. But why were they jolted so quickly? Mm. But this case happened for like five years. Mm-hmm. Multiple deaths intentionally. Mm-hmm. You hear it intentionally. And near deaths as well. Oh, yeah. and the ne- yeah. bring back capital punishment because... Yeah. I definitely think that needs to be brought back for cases like this. Because for I don't know, man. Like this. It's crazy. You're giving us a bad name, you know. We're not all bad guys. We care no, we for do our care. patients and people. We do care. It's unfortunate that there's some people on the register. There's always that one bad apple. Isn't there? Yes, most well, well, multiple, multiple bad apples who are not in the profession to look after people mm. and to have a duty of care. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, from this case, there are a lot of lessons learnt, and when there's going to be investigations, I feel like not just internal, there should always be an external person doing investigations. And if there's any accusations, report them straight to the NMC, please, because I feel like if the NMC were involved, this this, oh, this, this, this thing, been, this would have been... Done and dusted. Done. Like, the moment they probably f- found the first one, they she would have been struck off. Yeah. Because yeah. this is just... I don't know, man. So, yeah. And guys, what was I even going to say about this? I had last thoughts and this flown, flew flown out of my head. <laughs> and it's blown out of my head. But yeah, I think that was it for the Lucy. Let me bit yeah. get everything out. But yeah, we were speaking about men. And as always, they're always the root of all evils. <laughs> yep. I can't lie. Even for this one it is. Yeah, literally. That's so really bad. We had some of our listeners, one of our listeners asked us to talk about heartbreak and how to deal with heartbreak yeah um ha- well heartbreak can kill you man <laughs> how to deal with heartbreak go do a beauty pageant um n- no you're laughing but you know what when i say go do a beauty pageant because you're essentially you'll need to focus on yourself and focus on ways to better yourself and you also think about your good points your strengths and your you can weaknesses. only do that in the beauty pageant no that's that's a that's a that's what you did i know so you need to say- it helped. i can't lie come on like it's hard, but essentially, I was, as I always say to people, cut contact immediately. Cut or contact. That's hard sometimes. No, though. no, no. You just have to cut it. You have to block, block, block. Is it block, 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 block? Even the email block because people will, will still Not be emailing email. block. <laughs> Not the email. Because how are you supposed to move on if you still have contact? But how do you deal with it? Listen, this is where your friends come in. Literally. You'll be on their case all the time. You just, in a, essentially, you just need to be in a space where, like, you're not, you're just not in your thoughts. You need to be around friends. You need to keep yourself occupied. You just essentially just need to make sure you don't think about that one person. And sometimes I generally feel like heartbreaks. It's not really the person. It's what you 
had it's that companionship mm. it's always mm. having that person there so essentially it might not even be the person it's just what it was just the the, the situation the situation that yeah. companionship that you're yeah. missing because you might be thinking that that person's a waste man however that waste man was a companion True. and especially with, with uh, familiarity sometimes we're very scared to let go of familiarity because some people are very codependent sometimes in a relationship yes. that makes it much more harder to yes. to then um have that separation and also like you said do that cutting of the contact immediately um what was like oh it's gone on my head again it has to be done <laughs> my idea has gone on my head no but it's not easy and also like there's no quick way to be fair and it takes different people different times mm. to get over some people and also like if we were just going out for like maybe like three four months then it's like get over it i mean it's still gonna be hard Ouch. but like if you <laughs> but like if you're going out for ages for like years and years and years then i'm not gonna lie to you there's no easy way out of heartbreak you have to feel it you actually have to feel it and you have to go through it like when you're healing and like anything in life it's there's always gonna be there's always gonna be ups and downs like essentially there'll be times to be like oh it's all right i'm having a good day it's fine mm -hmm. other days you'll be crying mm -hmm. but listen it's okay to cry it's better to just cry let it all out and just <sighs> and when it's fresh and you wake up the next have you ever had the heartbreak where now, do you know, you know when you, you're sleeping and like the sleep is the escape and then you wake up and then it hits you. It's literally the first thing that Sometimes you'll wake you. up and then you see a tear come from your eye. Oh my God. The heartbreak can kill. It can actually kill. However, it could also be the making of you. Yes, Cause absolutely. Because I also feel like sometimes we, we may not know, but we lose ourselves in relationships. We yep, kind of lose yep, who we are as, yep. as a person. And then sometimes we become codependent. And when you're codependent on somebody, you do lose aspects of yourselves that you won't even realise until mm -hmm. you're out of the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe people around you might tell you, then you'll be thinking that they're bitter. But listen, they're just they're not being bitter. They're just being babes or some of them. Um so essentially that time that heartbreak yes it's hurting but that's also a time dedicated time for you to rebuild yourself and focus on yourself and essentially start to love yourself again because sometimes you fall out of sometimes it's not about falling in love with somebody you've got to fall in love with yourself other times just get under somebody else pardon <laughs> what is this sometimes that helps that, no, helps, with, that helps with the healing process at times not freshly no not freshly especially freshly oh my god no oh because <laughs> i know a few girls that have done that and they were just like it was the worst thing they did because i so know fresh. some that was so great damn because it just takes your mind of it for a while obviously you're not going you're not getting under that person with the intention of you're getting into another relationship just have fun Oh, yeah, yeah, in terms of having fun. Not yeah, not to get out of a relationship. I mean, like, you but know. But then some women will do that. Some women, well, some women, some men as yeah, well. Yeah, Their way of getting over somebody is mm -hmm. to get into another relationship with somebody else. And I feel like that's a red flag in that person. What do you mean? What, their way of? Like, one, like jumping from one to another, not even having in time to In terms of men? And women. Well, I feel like men do it more because it hits them much later. Mm. Whereas women, we deal with it a little bit fresher. Mm -hmm. so then by the time we've dealt with the heartbreak and we've like semi-healed or whatever and ready to kind of move on with our lives that's when you realize that later the, later on down that line the man will then come and then try to ruin everything because they they deal with it much they deal with it like much 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 later they like you said they just hop scop and skip to whatever vagina they can fall into um straight away and then and not deal with it and then later they get sick of that they start dealing with it and then they start regretting shit but i would advise that if that's something that you want to do if you're going through a heartbreak and that's something that you want to do in terms of getting under someone else just to have your fun do it i feel like if you know yourself very well oh, yeah, if you know because there's some women that get very very attached very very quickly so i wouldn't recommend that to them <laughs> If you are, you to, are you trying to like what's what's the word? What are you trying to shade me or something? I'm not. Because the way you said that. No, no, I'm just no. I didn't say it like that. I mean, I do, but <laughs> no. It, it also it really depends on you as a woman because yeah. there's some women that are 
they get attached very, very quickly and I wouldn't recommend that to them because you're going to get your heart broken and imagine yeah. you're already down in the dumps and then this one breaks your heart, you'll be further down in the dumps. But sometimes the only way you can find that is if you do it. Because I didn't know that about myself because I was in a relationship for so long. So I did it and then I found out about myself. I'm like, oh crap, yeah, I'm not one of those ones that can just do that. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. yeah. You don't want to be thinking what if, so by all means no. go for it. Yeah. But essentially you know yourself as well. So if that's if you feel like it will be detrimental to for you, mm. don't. If you don't know, try it. If you're like, oh my gosh, it's, it's a bit of me, by all means, go and do it. But yeah. essentially, you, like, yeah, getting under somebody, it can help. It can, for sure. But it's, it's temporary fix, for sure. But then you need to it's remember not. that it's a temporary fix, not a permanent yeah, fix. Yeah, it's definitely not a permanent fix. And also stay safe. And um, essentially, gosh, there's so, new, there's so many ways. It's like, huh. I don't know, man. Heartbreak. How long does a heartbreak last for? That's another thing. Uh, you, you can't, can't, really put, you you can't, can't measure that. You can't. You, it's just one day you just wake up and you're fine. Literally comes out of nowhere. One day you wake up and you're like, Rah. you go through the whole day and you realise, I didn't think about them, you know. I didn't feel sad. I'm fine. And then all of a sudden, you're living your life exactly like that. And that's it. You're fine. But do you think closure works? No. No, no, Do you think closure no. is always needed? No, it's not. Why? <laughs> I just feel like closure's... Oh, I don't believe in closure. I'm so sorry. Okay. It's because, like, unless it's, like, something that you didn't speak about whatsoever, mm. then you guys can speak. But it's never just speaking, is it? No. It's <laughs> exactly. No, Imagine it's you've not. healed. You want to have your closure. You bump into... But that's so stupid. Why would you go have a closure when you've healed? Some people have. Uh, That's so dumb. Or let's say you're on your healing journey. You've done quite yeah. well for yourself. And then this person pops up and bless your heart thinking, oh, they just, they, they just, they just want to have a talk and have it out. And then bang. And then you're back to square one. Like yeah. imagine you've made so much progress and then you're just knocked back down. And sometimes what you go into the closure in your head with is not what they're going to say. Because, you know, sometimes you want to go into the closure and have them say something like, "Oh, you know, it's so, uh, like I'm, I'm, you know, it's been horrible without you. I shouldn't have done it. Blah blah, blah blah. Sometimes that does. That's not what they will say. Okay. They will just say they're sticking to their decision, and it is what it is. Basically. And then quite, you come out yeah. even more hurt. Sometimes they're, they're quite blunt. They're quite blunt, you know. They're just be, yeah, men men can men be are very blunt. blunt. Like, I Damn. want to be that blunt. I'm I trying try. to be that blunt. I try. I can't. Because like, imagine like the thing is like essentially people will probably go to going go like okay you're gonna have closure for them to say sorry 99 percent of the time they're, they're not, not gonna they're not gonna say sorry to you, and babe. they are not sorry they're probably gonna say something that'll probably hurt you even more exactly and then, and then like then i said they'll knock you like your healing yeah, journey is supposed to be up and down but that will literally that's like a volcano erupting and all the ashes landing on your eye like what? babe it's just it's, it's gonna hurt <laughs> i know the ashes lying on your eye <laughs> I'm like so sometimes mad. your your own closure could literally just be reflection on the relationship mm. where they went wrong but also where you went wrong but sometimes closures do work i've had closure that has worked for me oh i haven't oh okay yeah like just like having that little conversation and you're like right okay and that just helps you heal even more i don't feel like i had to have a conversation with them i just was just like do you know what yeah well, it depends on how it ended doesn't it yeah, I just, I feel like for me, I didn't want to have a conversation because I was like, I felt like I was getting to that point where it was going to be done and dusted anyway. Mm, yeah, it'll, okay. it'll, it'll just be like, okay, it's going to hurt. But at the end of the day, I need to be selfish and put myself first. So you already had your closure with yourself. Yeah, I was just That's like... That's why. Yeah, I was just like, do you know what? That's I don't need why. to be... Well, cause, just because I know, I, fig- I I probably preempted, okay, I think I know what they're going to say. Mm. And it's just like, it's not something that I'm that I'm that that I need to hear. Not necessarily what I want to hear, but it's not what I need to hear. But then if it's something that came out of nowhere, sometimes you do need that little clip. I'm like, not going to feel sorry it, for them. No, but like if, let's say, for example, you're with someone for many years and then they just come and just leave you just like that. Mm. Sometimes you do need that little closure because it's like, why? Do you know what? Like what, what went, like, you know, you're there being oblivious and the other person. So you, like what you just said there, you might not have needed the closure because in your mind you were done. Mm. But they might have, they might not have been done, but you just went in and be like, okay, yeah, this is it. You know, it's finished, whatever. But they're thinking, what the heck? They need some sort of explanation. Oh yeah, I refuse to give people, ex- listen, in life you don't have to explain yourself. <laughs> not all the time, but sometimes you do a little bit. I mean, everyone has the right to leave people. Everyone has the right to, you know, decide 
they want something or they don't want something. But the least you can do is just give a little bit of a, an explanation. Yeah, I refuse to, to do that. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, um, do you know? No, do you know what? As you get older, and with every let's say relationship or situationship you're in, every single time something comes to an end, you really learn how to put yourself first. I understand what you're saying completely. Yeah. Like, I probably should have given them an explanation, but at the same time, I'm like based on the based on how they again. It's, it also depends on how it broke off and mm. how they treated you to the run up to the the solution <laughs> of whatever was going on. If I felt that you were not treating me right and I was just broken off, I do not owe you an explanation as to why. Because nine times out of ten, you know what you're doing. Mm. Listen, like at the end of the day, people know what they're doing. People know how they're treating other people. Mm. And if someone chooses to break it off, yes, yes, in in a, in a sense, have the closure, have the conversation. But at the same time, if I feel like this conversation is going to be detrimental towards me, I am yeah. not going to do it. Yes. That's fair. So that brings me to that. We've had this discussion before in previous, I think it was previous episodes in season one. So if you're thinking that and you're that ready to leave and something happened in, in their life, something massive that happens in their life, like a parent died or something, are you still staying or are you leaving? Do you know what? This is going to sound so bad. Because last time you said you're staying. No, no, I no, said no. I'm gone. This is going to sound so bad. I stayed, but now I'm thinking about it. I should have just left and ran. See? Told you. I should have just left and ran. Told you. Because people, sometimes people generally say people out of pity. Yeah. And I've done that with not just situations, relationships, with friendships. I've me- messing up your, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's true. I've stayed out of pity. And yes, it's true. It does mess me. It does mess up with your mental health in a sense because you're like, you always feel sorry for that person. You always mm. feel like you need to be there for them. But walk it's not, on eggshells. And yeah, like walk on eggshells. You can't really vocalize yourself because they're going through their shit. Mm. I'm so sorry. Excuse my language. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Now I've come to a place. You can be going through your shit. If it's detrimental towards me, I don't care. I don't want to know. I'm going. So what made you change your mind? Because you were very because I was young that. and naive. And a few months ago, I was naive. A few because months ago, I was naive. <laughs> <laughs> no, because do you know what? In, at the end of the day, I am not your keeper. Yeah, exactly. You are not my responsibility. Yeah, yeah, you are yeah. not. You did. I did not bring you out of my vagina. At the end of the day, yeah, you're not my flesh and blood. You're not my responsibility. If you're going through your stuff in your life, fair enough. Everyone goes through stuff in life, whether they want to vocalize it or not. People have different ways of dealing with it. However, yeah. if your behavior towards me changes because of that, okay. If if you're like angry for a few bits, fine. But if you're showing me anger and bitterness for a long duration of mm. of time and we choose to cut it off i have no reason to stay with you because of that because i feel yeah. sorry for you i don't need to stay with you yeah and also sometimes it's like um obviously there's no there's no right way of breaking up with someone but there's a wrong way so it's all about how you're gonna do it yeah like just just ghosting and blocking someone off the face of the earth that is horrible don't do that to anybody that's me child that is horrible so, so like, again, it depends because then if you do it in such a way that is not nice but because it's not going to be a nice situation, but that's sufficient enough, then, like, going back to the closure thing, the closure might not be needed. Yeah. Because you might have sat them down, spoken to them about this and this and this and this is the reason why I can't do this anymore. Then there will be no need for closure. Do you know, the way I did my things was, was mad back in the day, you know. How did you do now. it? I was like, do you know what, yeah? Bye. Don't call me. Don't text me. Delete my number. I don't want to know. And that's it. Yeah. You didn't give me give them a reason why you're going. Oh, it's like it's your behavior. You can look at yourself and reflect on yourself. But I don't want anything to do with you. The other one, no. The other one, it was mutual. Whatever. I don't care. But at the same time, it's like to be fair, all of them were wanted wanted that closure, wanted to have a conversation with me, but I didn't feel like I needed to. Okay. Because they needed it. Yeah, I don't care about them though. <laughs> No, because you know what? When when that closure was needed, I was already healing and developing myself. And I knew First. if if that was to happen, I would dip back. I would get upset. I would take a step back in my healing journey. Yeah. And in this life, we're not selfish enough. True. So in my stage, I'm like, oh, oh, break up. Let me be selfish. I don't need to hear what you got to say. I just do my thing. You Listen, at the end of the day, look, like, the thing is as well, like, 
I get closure, but also self-reflection is another thing because most times mm. people do not reflect on their own behavior. No, they don't. They don't. There's no. a lot of, oh, you did this, you did that, but there's no reflection of, oh, where I went wrong. Right, yeah, 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 They're yeah, very, yeah. People are very easy to say where you went wrong or yeah. where you went wrong, but not where I went wrong. Yeah, that's true. So sometimes heartbreak does force you to self-reflect on what you went like what you did and what you didn't do well. well. Yeah. I know I was very naive when I was younger. I was very, very oh, forgiven. Yeah. We all were. We all so were very, very now, naive. yeah, I'm an ice cold bitch guy. <laughs> wow. I'm not the ice cold bitch. <laughs> no, not really. I'm a big soft dick. But sure. yeah, just heartbreak. Everyone has their own way of dealing with it. I just find your like, way. Yeah, find your way. Um, also, don't let people tell you, oh, you should do this, you should do this. No, girl, find your own way, or guy, find your own way. And yeah, some people things. go to the gym, they'll lose weight, they'll come up with a revenge body. I did. Well, whatever. It's, I it's, did it's, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it came and went. It came and went. <laughs> yeah, so however, like, you want to you wanna deal with it, but just know that don't, don't like, be like, oh, um, what's it called? it's going to take me this long or it's not going to take me that. Like, just let it, just feel the feels. Like, don't keep the feels in. If you need to cry about it, feel it and let it go. And then, you know, before you know it, you'll be over it, man. Mm -hmm. And, like, it might take months. It might take a year. Who knows? Hopefully not. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sometimes it just... And then bear in mind, you just you rediscover different like aspects of yourself that you don't even know. So essentially, healing is a good thing in life. No one's one hundred percent healed. Everybody, healing is an ongoing process. The same way that down. like let's just up and down. It's continuous. There's never I've never met someone who's completely healed. No. That's impossible. No. Everybody's healing from some sort of something. trauma. Like something, some trauma or something. So just bear that in mind that there's no quick or easy fix. It's an ongoing thing, and you just have to be patient with yourself. Oh, the lovely. Well, it wasn't a lovely episode because we had to talk about that bitch, at the beginning. But it was needed. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but it was needed. Um, you got anything else you want to say for the last episode, guys? Thank you, thank you, thank you, our lovely babes and babettes for. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? For our lovely season two that's been packed full of confessions, dilemmas. Oh, it's been great. It's been a great season. It's been packed with so much. Some of the confessions that we had was... They were just... They were very mad. Gosh, they were crazy. But thank you, guys. As always... We love you. We love you. Like and subscribe. Uh, Tell a friend to tell a friend. And we will keep you all updated on Instagram as to when we're going to be back with season three. Thank you for the support. As always, love... Bye. Bye-bye.